Xbox is getting Activision, but does it matter? Don't let this problem happen to your PS5. How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. This is the midweek news update. Before I jump into it all though, I just wanna ask you real quick, if you've been enjoying these videos, whether you're new here or you've been around for a while, it would really help me out if you subscribed and set your notifications to all. I'd love to hit 200,000 subscribers as fast as possible. So if you wanna help me get there, just click that red button. All right, so let's start out with this first news story because even though it's like kind of 50-50 overall, it's actually got me pretty excited because this whole situation between Xbox, the FTC and Activision might finally be resolving soon. So we knew that Xbox was in a lawsuit situation with the FTC because the FTC was coming after them saying that this was going to create a monopoly. Their cloud business of all things is going to get too big. Sony is going to have too much competition. X, Y, and Z and Xbox was basically saying no. This was all going on over the past week. It's where we heard about the PS6. It's where we heard about the PS5 Pro, the PS5 Slim. We got all that great news out of it. And then we just basically had to sit and wait for a ruling. And the judges basically come back in favor of Xbox. So if everything goes right, which it looks like it's going to, Xbox is going to be able to buy Activision Blizzard and they'll own stuff like Call of Duty, they'll own Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Diablo 4, like all these huge games that PlayStation players really like. Except, I guess, Overwatch 2 because it's not very good now and World of Warcraft because it is on PC exclusively. Call of Duty is obviously the big franchise that was really worrying Sony here. We've heard from Jim Ryan though that he wasn't actually all that worried. It's just obviously not great if Xbox picks up Activision Activision because that's competition for Sony. So they basically had to fight back in any way they could. And that's exactly what they did. Unfortunately, it looks like they just had to drag it out as long as possible because everything was going to come down in Xbox's favor anyway. But I think Sony put up a good fight here. And the deal it looks like they have to look forward to with Call of Duty is having it for at least the next 10 years, which will keep it on the PS5 for a while and get us a couple games on the PlayStation 6. Now, look, I'm just going to be real with you guys. I've never been the biggest fan of Call of Duty. I really like Black Ops 2. I put a ton of time into that way back on the Xbox 360. I did get Black Ops 3 and a couple of other random games in there. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War I thought was pretty decent and I think it's worth playing on PS Plus right now, especially the story. I also enjoyed the zombies mode, but the one where I really just had to draw the line was Modern Warfare 2. I picked that game up in early access, which means I paid like $100 for it. And not only did it not work for most of that opening weekend, it just really wasn't that much fun. It felt like more Call of duty, which, you know, if that's what you're looking for is cool. But once I finished the six hour story, I was really left with a product that I paid full price for, well, actually well over full price for, and didn't really find much fun in the multiplayer. And there's just been so much great single player content coming out this year between Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, Final Fantasy 16, Diablo 4 is not single player, but I'm basically playing it single player, where I just have enough stuff going on in the world of PlayStation, whether it's first party, second party, or third party, where I don't really feel Feel like I need Call of Duty anymore to fill my time. I mean, I've even been jumping off of the live service stuff like Destiny 2. I skipped the last season for the most part after Lightfall came out and wasn't that great. I haven't really played much of this season and yeah, I'm not really feeling like I need to go back anytime soon. And I'm starting to think that a lot of PlayStation fans and hardcore gamers are starting to feel the same way or have felt the same way for a while. Look, I understand that there's a lot of people out there who make Call of Duty their one game. They love Warzone, they love Call of Duty, they love the multiplayer, the single player, whatever it is. There's also people out there who make Madden, FIFA, and of course uh, 2K, their game of the year that they play all year round and then they buy the next version for like a hundred bucks in the next year. There's nothing wrong with that. I guess I was doing the same thing with Destiny where I would get the ultimate edition of the next expansion which gave me the season pass and all the dungeon content for the next year on top of that expansion. But I've really come around and sticking with single player games lately because that's where I'm finding the most enjoyment. Especially when I'm moving and everything's going crazy around here. The best part of my night is sitting down, turning on my TV, booting up my PS5, and playing a couple hours of Final Fantasy 16. It's giving me that sort of like escapist feeling I used to get when I was a kid. I'm sure in part that's because I moved back to my hometown and I'm getting a lot of those nostalgic memories, but it's still nice to be able to just shut the outside world off with all this stuff going on around me and just play video games. And not having to worry about checkbox stuff or busy work or getting mad at people online. I can just sit there, enjoy it, and I've even started using headphones again, which is a great experience. 
And when all this started, like this whole deal between Xbox and Activision, the one game I was really scared to lose was Diablo 4 because they had talked about how it was going to be cross save, cross platform. I bought it on PC and PS5 for that reason. I've been switching between my PS5 on the TV, but when my fiance wants to use the TV, I just switch back over to my ROG Ally or my Steam Deck and I have a great experience there. And then of course I have my main gaming PC right over there. And I've really enjoyed that switching experience between all three of these devices because all three of them basically run the game the exact same. The one outlier there, of course, being the Steam Deck running the game at 40 FPS, but still that looks really good. So before all of this happened, I was worried about losing Diablo 4, but it's out now. And like I just mentioned, I've been having a ton of fun on PlayStation. So that game's safe. And I don't think Diablo 5 is coming anytime soon. And of course, if and when it does, I have a gaming PC. So if it's not on PS5, it's really not that big of a deal for me. It's like a minor annoyance. And then you just gotta consider how great Sony's output has been even in this generation where games have been sort of light, I would say. Even these PS4, PS5 cross-gen games like Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, they feel truly next-gen compared to a lot of the contemporary games that are coming out on Xbox. I see the one game that people love bringing up as like a huge competition to Final Fantasy 16 being Hi-Fi Rush. And look, I am the biggest Tango Gameworks defender out there. I love The Evil Within. The Evil Within 2 is one of my all-time favorite survival horror games. Games. And of course, playing Ghostwire Tokyo was a pretty solid experience and I love Hi-Fi Rush, but that's a completely different game to Final Fantasy 16. And I would take Final Fantasy 16 over Hi-Fi Rush any day of the week. So yeah, I think Sony's gonna be just fine without Call of Duty. Jim Ryan obviously feels the same way because those emails leaked where he basically said, yeah, I totally understand we don't need Call of Duty, but why not prolong this whole thing as long as possible? Because all it does is make Microsoft spend money and not focus on actually putting out games Games, which ultimately is good for us. We saw it kind of bounce back and bite PlayStation in the ass a couple times, but overall, I'd say even with Xbox winning this battle and getting Activision Blizzard, PlayStation is coming out on top because Xbox's biggest argument was, we just can't compete with PlayStation. We don't have games that are good enough, so we need to buy better IP and continue to make them and make some of it exclusive so that PlayStation has competition. I don't really know what the strategy was there on just kind of putting yourself down Xbox, but either way, I think everything is working out just fine. And now we can just get back to playing video games and being excited about video games once again. And the biggest news story in the gaming industry is not going to be a lawsuit because to me, there is nothing more boring than talking about a lawsuit. But of course, just like when this lawsuit started and we saw Sony kind of hit back by buying Bungie, everyone's kind of sitting here wondering what is Sony going to buy to retaliate against Microsoft actually looking like they're going to get Activision Blizzard. There are a few options here and I personally personally don't think Sony needs to buy any of these studios. I'm just going to say up front, I think from a quality standpoint, they're doing just fine. The whole reason Xbox bought Bethesda in the first place is because Sony was going behind their back and making a similar deal with Starfield that they did with Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. And Xbox said, we just can't have this happening anymore. So they bought Bethesda and are making all the Bethesda games exclusive. So Sony doesn't want that to happen again. They're going to have to buy some studios. It's like the unfortunate reality of all this, all this consolidation. The first studio is the most obvious pick and that is Square Enix. They have been gearing up to be bought for a long time now. They got rid of all of their Western studios, all of their Western IP. I think Amazon has Tomb Raider now. Embracer Group has Eidos and Deus Ex and all these different IP over there. They're famously not happy with all of the performance of their Western games and even some of their like Eastern games or Japanese games, they're never really happy with all that stuff. But you know, fire sailing all of their different subsidiaries and IP over here in the West is just gearing them up for a sale because they can sit there and demand a higher price because they're saying, look, we've got all of our best IP still and it is ready to be bought by you, Sony. They've got all their best IP still and they can just sit there and say, look, Sony, it's ready for you to grab. You don't even have to worry about picking up all this other IP that would potentially have this deal be blocked because then Microsoft could say, hey, a lot of these games are Western games that sell really well on Xbox. Now they don't have that opportunity because all of these games that Square Enix has basically aren't available on Xbox. And then on top of that, we've seen games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy VI and just tons of other games not come to Xbox from Square Enix. They're already PlayStation exclusive to begin with, not counting PC and sometimes Nintendo Switch. So you can kind of see why Square Enix would be a logical choice for Sony. And I think overall, that'd be pretty good. Final Fantasy 16 is a great example of a game that to me at least feels like it's 98% there. I feel like if this was Sony putting it out, it would have got just a little bit more development time and it would have had a performance mode that lets it run at 60 FPS. I'm having a good time with the 30 FPS mode because it is a hard lock 30, but 
I'm not gonna lie to you and say I wouldn't love to be playing this game at 60 FPS. Also, it's pretty obvious that Final Fantasy VII Reunion is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. I would just worry about them picking up Square Enix and then having Nintendo lose a lot of these games like the Deal Field Chronicle, Triangle Strategy, Octopath Traveler 2. I love playing these games on PlayStation. I love having them big on my TV and running at a high resolution and high frame rate, but you know, it doesn't really seem fair to Nintendo who's not really ever coming after PlayStation with a lot of their releases and doesn't seem like they're doing a lot of these crazy deals that Xbox is doing to keep these games off PlayStation. So that would be one casualty, I guess, of this situation. But after seeing how Sony's treating these Bungie releases like new Destiny content or a marathon, I could see them being a little more amicable with Nintendo than they would be with Xbox because, you know, they have a little bit more of a contentious relationship with Xbox than they do Nintendo. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know my big first choice for a pickup from Sony would be Konami, mainly because Konami doesn't seem to know how to run themselves. So if Sony was able to pick up all their IP and just sort of take it over, keep the studios who are working on stuff, working on stuff, maybe spread out some of the IP like Castlevania, for example. Silent Hill seems like it has a lot going on right now. Bloober Team is making a remake of the second game that is going to be PS5 exclusive already. So that's already geared up for Konami to be bought by Sony. Of course, they also have Metal Gear Solid and they're basically positioned here to get more people to buy a PlayStation 5 with these master collections. I don't think you cancel the releases of those on Nintendo Switch and Xbox and PC. I think you let all of those games going all the way up to Metal Gear Solid 4 come out on these other consoles. Then you announce Metal Gear Solid 6 and say, hey guys, if you wanna play Metal Gear Solid 6, you're gonna have to pick up a PS5. And I think a lot of people would. The third option is of course Capcom, but I don't think that's going to happen because I just personally don't think Capcom would even be on the table. Of course, there is a number. Every company has a number. I just think with the success of Capcom over the past few years, they, the number would just be so high that Sony either couldn't afford to or wouldn't want to pay it. And then of course, you've got Electronic Arts and Ubisoft. Ubisoft is the one where I'm like, don't even go near it. I like Assassin's Creed. I think Prince of Persia is cool. I think they have some pretty decent IP, but this churn of just cookie cutter, open world checkbox farming simulators are just not my thing anymore. And I don't think like Ubisoft would be interested in stopping making those because that's their bread and butter. So if Sony picked them up, that just seems like a mess that Sony would be adopting, that they would have to then go in and kind of gut things, figure some stuff out, maybe lay some people off, which would suck. And then rebuild that publisher from the ground up, which doesn't seem like what we want Sony focusing on. EA is one I wouldn't be too upset about Sony picking up though, because if Sony grabs EA, then EA would be forced to actually finish their games. I mean, if you look at all the stuff they put out this year, I can just go down the laundry list. Dead Space had massive problems with graphics on the launch weekend of that game. They did fix it pretty quickly, but you know, it still has loading stutter between areas. And if you played the game over the launch weekend, you had those stupid graphical bugs. Wild Hearts came out, had terrible performance across the board on pretty much every console and PC. Jedi Survivor is the ultimate sin on EA's part, in my opinion, because the performance mode still doesn't work. It does not run anywhere close to 60 FPS. And even if you have a variable refresh rate TV, it drops below the threshold. So you'll still see that frame rate stuttering happening all the time. But yeah, that's the situation as it stands now. It looks like Microsoft is going to make this deal with the CMA and pick up Activision. And now we can finally move on from this entire scenario. It's been wild. It's been crazy. I'm just glad that it looks like it's almost over. Next up here, I was scanning the PlayStation subreddit for some news stories to talk about in this video. And I saw a Reddit post from someone who said they were playing Diablo 4 on their PS5 and then the game crashed and the PS5 said it needed to restart and reinstall the operating system. Now it might surprise you to hear that this is something that's happened to me on both my PS4 and my PS4 Pro and there actually is a pretty easy fix for it. So you've probably seen this message before if you've unplugged your PS5 without turning it all the way off or you've had a power outage or something like that. The next time you turn your PS5 on, it'll do like a triple beep and then it'll take you to a recovery menu where it might actually rebuild your database and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. So what you're gonna do is walk up to your PS5 and hold the power button on it for a long time until you hear two beeps and then it'll boot into safe mode. Now, the first thing you're going to wanna to do is scroll down to the sixth option, which is to clear the system cache. That's basically like a temp folder where like unfinished downloads, games you've deleted that have extra data, just all that extra stuff that doesn't get deleted or cleared up for some reason or another chills in that folder. You're gonna to wanna to clear that because you don't want it to become corrupt. And then once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to rebuild the database of your PS5. And then it'll basically just clear everything out and stop it from getting bogged down. So if you've noticed your PS5 slowing down or anything like that, this could be a very easy fix to do so. Now, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna 
give you a suggestion I've been giving in other videos recently, which is to clean your PS5. Look up a video out there about how easy it is to take the side plates off of your PlayStation 5 and give it a pretty fairly deep clean. Now, what I would recommend is taking out the fan of your PlayStation, which is easy. You just unscrew the grill that's over the fan and then you pop that off and then be very careful unplugging the fan from the little port on the actual side of the PlayStation because some people have been pulling that wire out instead of actually just unseating the little connector there. And once you do that, it should just come right out. And that's when you're gonna wanna take some compressed air and just blow out the fins in your actual fan. Once you do that, just put it back in, pop that little cord in, screw everything back together, and you should be good to go. You can also access different parts of your PlayStation with the compressed air. Just make sure you're not blowing the dust in and doing everything you can to blow the dust out. So if you've noticed your PS5 slowing down or you've ran into this issue that this user had with Diablo where the PS5 had to reinstall its operating system and then they had to go and download a bunch of games again. Those are the simplest fixes. It should only take around 20 or 30 minutes. Just restart your PS5 into safe mode, delete the cache, and then of course rebuild the database and then clean out your PlayStation 5 and you should be good to go.